Welcome to the Woodpreneur Podcast, the best podcast for the business and marketing side of the sawmill, lumber, and wood industry. What's a woodpreneur? If you have a business where you make money as a woodworker, sawmill owner, selling slabs, or a content creator, then you're a woodpreneur. My name is Steve Larzelier, and I started Woodpreneur Life, Acres of Timber, and the Woodpreneur Podcast just for makers, wood entrepreneurs, and small business owners just like you. We're on a mission to empower thousands of wood businesses to grow sustainably and put out great products. Each week, I interview makers, sawyers, content creators, and six- and seven-figure entrepreneurs that know the wood industry inside and out, with topics covering everything from the urban lumber movement, sustainable sourcing and design, we'll discuss the ins and outs of how to grow, monetize, and fully immerse yourself in the woodpreneur lifestyle. If you're a hobbyist, a full-time wood business owner, part-time entrepreneur who wants to become a content creator, or quit your day job to pursue your dreams, the Woodpreneur Podcast is just for you. Thanks so much for listening. Now enjoy this episode. Hey, welcome to a brand new episode of the Woodpreneur Podcast. This is your host, Steve. Today's guest is Chris Huguet from the Lumber Lab. How you doing? Good, good. How you doing today? Good, good, good. Um, hey, why don't you tell everybody about uh, the Lumber Lab? Sure. Um, how'd, you, how'd you get started? So funny, this is not where any of my background is in at all or any of my schooling. Um, I went to school actually initially to be a doctor. So I have an undergrad from the University of Florida in microbiology. Uh, I went on to get a master's from USF uh, College of Medicine. So I have a master's in neuroscience. Uh, and then, yeah, so then I switched uh, gears a little bit. I was going to be a doctor, ended up changing things a bit. I have a brother who is a doctor already. He's a surgeon in the area. And I kind of saw the uglier side of, of all of that before fully diving into it. So I switched career paths a little bit um, and I became a chemist for a missile company. And basically what I did was ensure uh, the chemistry inside the power sources for these missiles was doing exactly what it was intended to do. Uh, So I did that for a little over nine years. Uh, And then just a bit prior to COVID, I was switching gears a bit. I absolutely loved what I did. I love science. I love all that aspect. Just not a big fan of the corporate set up and all of that. So I uh, was exiting out of that and went into, I was going to try medical uh, sales for a little bit. Then COVID hit. And of course, I couldn't go into any of these doctor's offices or do anything like that. So uh, still looking for a science job in my field. Didn't want to go back to that company uh, and ended up um, starting to make things. I've always made things and done Uh, woodworking on the side. It was a passion I have. My grandpa did it a lot. My father did it a bit. Uh, So learned the basics from them and kind of was making a few, you know, farmhouse kind of stuff uh, for different family members or whatnot. Uh, And then progressing my skill, building up a bit. And then luckily, I actually got in contact with Justin Asherman of Rustic Grain Designs, if anybody's familiar with him. Uh, And he actually took me on under his wing a bit and taught me everything he knew, uh, which definitely uh, expedited my growth and potential rather quickly. Uh, We have a lot of similarities in our attention to detail with what we do in our finished product and stuff. So it worked well, and I was glad that I was able to get with him to learn what I now know uh, because I learned it from a very detail-oriented perspective, uh, which kind of helped me. So... Uh, from there, did it out of the garage for quite a while, uh, and then just slowly built things up and then into a shop and then kind of moving on from there. And so this was, uh, that, I mean, there's so much to unpack there that yeah, you <laughs> literally went to <laughs> medical school on the path of being a doctor, switched gears, became a chemist. You like, you were not really feeling the cold corporate the corporate life so you started uh doing uh uh sales right mm-hmm. and then covid happened and then you had to switch gears altogether so yep. <laughs> and i was still looking in the science industry and then i you know had a very serious conversation with my wife where, where do we want to, what, what are we trying to do here? Like, is this something that I want to do on the side and, and kind of just enjoy it in that aspect? Or is this something 
we really want to just dive into and, and make it a career. Uh, and at the time, I mean, I, I still worked all the time and I didn't hate it. Uh, you know, yeah. long hours, whatnot, obviously the startup, the beginning, you know, and, but at the end of the day, I didn't look back and, and think about how much I hated it. I enjoyed and wanted to go back out there the next day. So, uh, based on that passion, you know, and, and her support, we, at the time I didn't even have a full size truck or anything. I, I think, uh, we, I had an SUV. So when I first started, I was throwing stuff in the back of an SUV and we realized, you know, this isn't going to work, uh, sustainably for, for an actual, you know, business. So we got me a truck. Uh, and then later that year we got me a trailer, uh, cause I tried to, again, to transport things in the back of my truck in Florida weather comes and goes really quickly. So there were a few times I was transporting a, a table in there and I had to hide under uh, a gas station for a while while wow. a storm cell the passed. Rain. Yeah. And so I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. So we invested in a trailer to prevent that, obviously, and closed one. Uh, and then from there, it was just, well, what can we do to keep growing this? Do you ever, do you ever look back and be like, oh, I made the wrong, wrong decision? I think with any decision, sometimes we question, you know, is, is this, was this the right decision? Should I have gone this way? Should I have gone that way? Uh, and sometimes I personally think that there is no wrong decisions sometimes, as long as you're not ending up on the street uh, and you still have a support system behind you to, to kind of help you along. I don't think any decisions are bad. And luckily if, at some point, you know, I don't find this to be sustainable for me anymore. Luckily, I do have those two, degree, two degrees that I can fall back on uh, and maybe jump back into that field. Uh, again, I've, I've got multiple passions. So I did, again, like I said, love science, really, really loved it. So I wouldn't hate to go back into that field. I love being in a lab and, and working with, with chemicals and doing all of that. But again, working, I don't know if I could go back to working under somebody in that capacity, uh, giving them that power if they want to micromanage me and, you know, all of that. It's just, it, it would need to be possibly a, a different setup than a, a than different, a, a different path. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 But to your question, um, sorry, didn't mean to not answer it, but yeah, I question it, you know, is, is this, is this what I, what I should be doing? And there's a few, you know, never know where the next, build's going to come from. You never know if somebody's, you know, I'm just going to run dry and not have any work to do. Uh, and that's obviously a real uh, concern at times. And there has been a few times that I've gotten really close to the end of a build and I've had nothing behind it. And I'm, yeah, because what I do, it's not lower end. It's, it's a higher end quality custom product. So there, there's a niche market there. You know, there've been plenty of times, you know, people are like, Oh yeah, no, I'd be great with, you know, just some pine and that and not knocking that or anything. That's where I started in that, but where I've progressed too. I don't, I don't want to use pine anymore. I don't want to use lower end materials. I want to use higher end things that really give a, 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 a good product at the end for me. For sure. Did, how did you, how did you decide what products to build and who to sell it to? So at first, it was an open margin. Like I would take on anything, you know, Hey, you want a bench made? Uh, like, again, I said out of pine, sure. Come on, let's do it. Let's build a bench. That was from the first things, you know, you want a table. And then luckily through, I was afraid, honestly, at first of hardwoods, because even knowing that I'm a very meticulous person, I was still afraid of making a wrong cut. And then shoot, you just sacrificed a board of walnut that maybe I can't use anymore. And there goes 50, a hundred bucks, 200 bucks, whatever it may be. Uh, and you know, when I first was, was debating on that, it was, it was a daunting thing. So luckily, uh, my very first time working with hardwoods was Ash and Justin helped me, uh, kind of guide me in building the, the table so that I didn't need to have quite as much of that fear. So, uh, but yeah, so in the beginning it was anything and everything. And then trying to figure out where, where the good margins are, you know, where's the good profit margin, where's something that I enjoy. Where's a good niche that, that, uh, displays my talent or my abilities. Uh, and that's where kind of the cabinetry things fell into that. Uh, I still probably say my enjoyment the most is going to be in furniture. Like I really enjoy the differences in, in all the styles of furniture that you can build. Um, and sometimes you can make decent money doing it, but for the most part, it's a labor of love in, in that category. 
Uh, I've built furniture for our house and, and for family in that. And uh, as far as a sustainable um, business model uh, with overhead and things like that, furniture is, is a tough sole thing. So the cabinetry, I would say, is, is where uh, money gets a little bit better um, and it gives you a more breathing room. Yeah, I, I I tend to agree. Lots of lots of folks want to be able to design the furniture, but it's almost like the market isn't necessarily there yeah. to warrant a custom piece of furniture because it's this particular type of client that wants that. Yeah. Versus, you know, cabinetry has a ut- like a utility, right? Right, Fair, yeah. and you can get super creative too. Did, tell us about the first cabinet. Like when you realize like, oh, I think, I think this is the path that I, cause I'm looking at your, I'm looking at your portfolio and I can see that there's like math and there's design and it, it probably taps into all of the things that you innately are good at. Yeah. Right. Am I right with that? Yeah, no. And that's why, I, that's why this field ended up being perfect for me because before this, it was funny growing up as a kid, uh, I had, like I said, an older brother who was down the doctor path and he's uh, 12 years older than me. So, you know, he, he was into science and that's kind of where my enjoyment fell. But funny enough, growing up, I was always going to be a doctor or a Disney animator. Like I really love creativity and I love drawing. Uh, and that's where my other passion was. So it's kind of cool that I'm able to bring both of those passions together where I did always love math and math always just clicked for me. So it came a little natural in, in my math classes and stuff. So it's, it's great that I get to take the design aspect and my creativity uh, in that artsy kind of way and then combine it with my, you know, natural ability for math and stuff like that. Did you, what was, aside from the trucks, what were some of the other big investments that you made in your business? I would say moving to a shop was, was probably the scariest because uh, it's a reoccurring overhead that if you end up not having any money coming in, I mean, shop rent still got to get paid and the lights still got to stay on. So uh, I would say that was, was the scariest of them all. And prior to doing that, uh, obviously, you know, shop rent, I don't mind being open about it. My shop rent now is about 1400. Uh, it's not a huge shop and I, in progressing the company, obviously want to get bigger and have aspirations there. But with that said, prior to moving here, it was the plan to get majority of all of the machinery, the bigger stuff that I wanted, you know, where I could, you know, use maybe that shop money, uh, towards a couple months save up and Hey, I've got, you know, four grand and now I can use that instead of on a shop on a big piece of machinery that I can then move to the shop. Uh, so we tried to methodically do that and get all of the bigger necessary necessity machineries before moving to uh, a shop and having that, that expense. All right. Do you have a CNC? Uh, so not a big one. I've got a little one over here that still, and I don't know if you're familiar the fire I had uh, a year ago. So no, not familiar with that, but so that is back here. It's a smaller one. Um, it is a Shipoko um, 30 by 30. Uh, and the eventual goal is to move by move to a four by eight or five by 10, something that's going to be cutting my cabinet parts to accomplish that efficiency side of things. Uh, so that's, that's the goal, but yeah, so I have a smaller CNC didn't end up being, it was more that creativity side of me, um, to make signs and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure I ended up making more signs for my family than I have for clients uh, <laughs> yeah, using yeah, the yeah, CNC. Yeah. So it, it still, I have not since since the fire I had a year ago, I have not set aside the time to, to get it back and going just because it didn't end up being that, that bulk. It was kind of the fun side gig for me. Can you talk about the fire? Sure. So uh, in March 28th of last year, 2023, uh, and I'll give you kind of how, what led up to it, but I was working on a coffee table for our house and <clears throat> was working late, got done Rubioing it and, uh, company you're familiar with Rubio, uh, everybody else, maybe yeah. it's a, it's a uh, finished application. So 
rub it on, buff it off, put it on rags and that. And I had just got done uh, staying out at the shop to like nine or so because I really wanted to get it done so that it could dry and I could get it in the house and uh, show my wife and all that. But the next morning, <clears throat> I can't because I've got two cameras out front focusing on the front door and then our big door and they just kept going off. And usually in the mornings when they're going off, people are walking by other place spaces in, in the facility and that, but they just kept going off reoccurringly. And I'm like, man, there's gotta be something. All right, what's up? So I pull them up and I see a fire truck whizzing by. And in wow. this complex, there's another cabinet shop. That's a big, big cabinet shop down the way um, connected to it and everything. So I thought, oh, you know, because they work with solvent based uh, finishes and stuff like that. So and the finishing is right at the end of the, the row of shops that I'm at. So seeing the fire truck head that way, I thought, shoot, maybe they're, they're having a fire down there with the solvents that they spray. Uh, and so, you know, keep an eye on the things didn't, you know, get too worried because I'm further away from their bay. So I didn't think, you know, anything would travel here, but still obviously a bit worried. And then the more I'm watching these clips and all that, next thing I see is the firefighters at my door. And now I'm like, whoa, whoa, what's going on here? And still try not to think the worst, hoping, oh, maybe, you know, they're getting in there to, to see how far the smoke is spread or something of that. And they get in and the cameras, I've got cameras inside here and they were covered with smoke, so I didn't see anything. And then it opens up once they get the big door open and it clears out. And again, even at that moment, nothing looked out of place. Uh, granted, it yeah. was dark in here and everything, but nothing seemed on fire or anything like that. And, it, and I was like, ah, I better get down there to see what's going on. And on the drive, the lieutenant called and was like, hey, are you the owner of the wood shop? And I was like, well, which one are you talking about? There's one down the way that's bigger than me. And they said, no, it's a smaller unit. It looks like uh, we got the big door open. We see your sign hanging. I had a big uh, eight foot sign uh, that, that uh, was hanging. And that's where they got my phone number off of that. Uh, and they said, no, you know, there's been a fire at your shop. And then it was like, ah, you know, just struck with that fear and, and uncertainty of what happened. Uh, and so then I get down here and look around and uh, luckily enough, it, it started. And so backtrack, what it was, was I just wasn't as fully aware what chemicals were present in the Rubio. Uh, yeah. And some people find it to be a myth. Some people believe it. Uh, wherever you stand, it happened. And it happened. Yeah. yeah I, yeah. you know, would, would trade. And it was funny. Bourbon Moth just got done doing a video on it like a day or two prior. And I had not seen it yet. And, you know, there's that regret aspect of it that I wish I had seen it uh, and, and kind of knew a little more or that I should have been more educated about the products that I was using, especially with a chemistry background. Uh, and yeah, it the two careers or fields being separated. I just didn't think of that. Uh, and so, but sure enough, what had happened is, is like I said, I was working late through all my rags in a trash can and they were on top. The trash can was the end of my, um, my outfeed table for my, um, my table saw, which is in centrally yeah. located to the middle. I had a router table, a jointer, all kind of in the center of my setup and I had underneath the table saw scrap woods. And so wow. the trash can burnt down and you could see where it, there were uh, rubber mats. The fire had traveled along the rubber mats and then found that um, pile of, of scrap woods. And then from there it just, and I don't think it's a relatively closed building. There's no windows or anything. So I think that it just kind of smoldered and luckily no big major flames went up to catch the ceiling on fire or anything. So I was lucky in that regard that majority of the, the full losses were from the center uh, and it stayed self-contained. Um, wow. So, uh, and sadly enough at that time, I was in between insurances for the company uh, because I had signed up with an insurance and was under that for a few months and obviously very transparent and clear about what I do. They end up coming back and they're like, Hey, we're dropping you. Uh, you're not doing what we, we looked at your, uh, Facebook and Instagram and you're not doing what, what we thought you were doing. I'm like, 
What do you mean? There's it's furniture and cat. Couldn't argue with it. It it is what it was, you know. So it is what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay, fine. Moving on. So the next insurance company I was in the midst of. They wanted a detailed inventory of anything over five hundred dollars in the shop, and I'm like, well, it's gonna take me a minute, you know. I've got yeah something as simple as a festal domino that's you know a fifteen hundred dollar thing, but it takes up a small space. So I got to sit here and think about that all. So this happened in that interim where I didn't have any insurance. Uh, so wow. luckily the building, the owner uh, was a nice guy and, and kind of worked with me a bit um, and was open to me, you know, turning the place over without, you know, suing me or something of that nature. Uh, and he, we, we've made changes since then. He wasn't carrying the proper insurance uh, for such an event himself. So, uh, since then, you know, obviously I've taken precautions so that it's not happening again. Uh, I've got wireless fire alarms everywhere. I've got them in three different locations. Uh, I've got a proper disposal for all of my oily rags. Um, and I'm yeah. still obviously, uh, you know, PTSD or whatnot of that. This scenario. was a, this is literally a year ago. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, wow. And you know, it's uh, I'm on, I'm looking back at your feed and I remember this. Yeah. <laughs> I totally, I, and I remember the GoFundMe and I remember rusted grain designs and yep. yeah, I remember. Yeah, that was, uh, so he said, oh man, I'm sorry. I wasn't going to do any of that. That's not my style. You know, I'm, I want to earn what I, what I make in that. And so it was, it was a, a tough swallow to reach out. Ask and, for help. Yeah. And the community, gosh, responded just heart. It was amazing. Honestly, guys that I'd never talked to were wanting to, Hey, you know, let me set up an order at Lowe's for, you know, products for you to help clean. And a few guys were like, Hey, you're far away, but if you need any help moving anything, you know, I will grab my trailer and head four hours out so that I can help you. Uh, and Mm. so it was, the community of, of these, it was, it was cool to see the support and it was hard because my wife has a full-time job. So, you know, she couldn't take off and uh, for however long and, and help. You're right. Yeah. So this was my job. And so I was here every day, literally every single day. And people would say, well, why wouldn't you, you know, take, take a day off and relax a bit. I'm a worrier anxiety. I don't know what you want to call it, but I, I couldn't sit still. I wouldn't be able to just sit at home knowing there is shit to do. <laughs> so yeah. every day came in and just plugged away, you know, little by little and, and tried to maintain hope that someday it would all come back together. Uh, so, Oh man, how, how do you, so you, you probably went right into like, it's not necessarily flight mode. You went into fight mode. You were just yeah. like trying to salvage everything back and and i'm sure there's all these you know analogies and you know tales about like oh i'm gonna do things different right or i'm gonna this is something that i i can start anew right like you're you're rebuilding like could you could you talk about that process a little bit about like what what are you doing differently i mean obviously aside from the safety stuff but like from a business mindset perspective sure like how how have you a year later, a year later, um, it just safety precautions, you know, on, on so many fronts, because again, I was down and that GoFundMe helped a lot with the missed revenue, uh, that I was. And again, luckily for my wife and my family members and stuff like that. Um, but that was, that was the biggest fear, right? That, that same thing I talked about a bit ago, which was not having work to do, uh, and, and having no revenue on the same token. Now I've got no revenue and uh, I'm having to spend money to rebuild this place. Um, and that's where luckily uh, I, I did have a larger following. So companies, you know, were willing to work with me a bit. So I had companies like Rockler. They, they helped me uh, by giving me some things to rebuild my router table. Uh, a few companies that I reached out to just to see weren't able to help. Uh, but some, you know, really, really were, and were willing to go above and beyond. And I would say that helped a huge bit as well. 
uh, just knowing yeah. that I had that, that help um, to, to do that. But as far as going forward, precautions, safety, you know, especially with fire and all of that, that's what I did. But business wise, have a stash, right, of, of extra funds that that safety net of, you know, whatever it may be, maybe you, you calculate out a month, two months worth of overhead uh, and have that sitting aside for just that, that terrible potential moment. Uh, that this happens. Yeah. 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 That's, um, well, I'm glad no one was hurt. And, and that's another that. good thing. You know, it didn't spread to adjacent bays. Luckily, uh, I did end up, I mean, there was some, cause some of them connect through the, um, soffits and that. So I did have to, uh, go clean the neighbors, uh, the soot and stuff that kind of migrated over to there. Uh, but luckily nothing, nothing long lasting, ended up staying for anybody else uh, and ended up having to clean the whole pace, place. Whole thing was black, pitch black, ended up repainting everything. Uh, and it, 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 I try and look at the silver linings, right? So, I mean, that's all you can yeah. do, honestly. Is, that's all you can do. Yeah. I, honestly, it's re <laughs> it really is. I mean, a lot of times too, I just read this book called The Gap in the Gain. Okay. And it's it's a it's a really good book. I mean, you've lived it, so I don't think you need to no. read it. So <laughs> you can look at your your situations uh, and look at the gap, or you look at the gain. And it sounds like a it's highlighted all of the safety precautions that you might have overlooked. You know, luckily no one was hurt. Uh, you had you know your old sort of mentor slash employer pulled together a GoFundMe for you. Yeah. You had the community support and it's just like, wow, so much has gained because of this. And, and I'm sure like right now it probably, you probably locked in a little bit more into you, your model, right? So that you can become a little bit more efficient. Is that right? Sure. And honestly, it was tough not to think, you know, is this the sign that, that this really isn't what I'm supposed to be doing? Like, look at the mountain that I have in front of me to mm. climb over to get back into business and making things again. Uh, and so there were, you know, some deep moments of figuring out, you know, do I switch paths? Do I take this as, as a sign? But dude, you, you strike me as a person that just is not afraid to make big ass decisions, right? Like you've literally just said that you went to medical school and you decided to, so like hard decisions and mountains and obstacles are probably not anything new to you. And so. <laughs> no, and, and that's probably my parents, you know, my, my, yeah. my parents always, uh, especially my mom, it was always, you're, you're smart enough. You're talented enough. You're, you do whatever you want to do. And it may be hard, but just keep pushing and you're yeah. going to do it, put your mind to it and you're going to do it. So that always being in the back of my mind for everything I do, uh, and, and her being by my side still as, as an adult, you know, giving me that push definitely, you know, and, and it's, it's a mindset really, uh, that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're, you're, I mean, you're, you're an incredibly strong and resilient person. Like that's you're, weird. that's, that's not, it's not a, you know, it's not by accident. I'm, I've, I've always sort of said that, you know, I don't know if you're religious, but like God puts us in situations that, that he, he wouldn't put us in situations that we weren't prepared for. Right. He doesn't and give you anything you can't all, handle. Exactly. Exactly. And so, and, um, and that's, that's that's incredible. I'm so glad that that you were able to sort of bounce back. Um, so tell us what, who, how are you how are you marketing the business now? Like how are you getting clients? Marketing's minimal, to be honest, and that's where I try and set myself apart from as best I can with what makes me me. So, in certain tokens where I'm selling. Not necessarily just cabinetry, but what I am bringing to that table that is different. And so that's where I try to let them know like my attention to detail as a standout. But also, 
I'd say the biggest edge I have is my communication and my thoroughness with clients. Like in this industry, I guess that the, the trade industry a bit, things falling through the cracks with the trades is, is a common thing. Uh, so, you know, maybe a client calling and you're not calling them back for a week or they text and you don't text them back for a while. So I pride myself on the communication that I'm going to get back to you right away. I'm going to be yeah. super thorough with, with what I'm providing. I'm going to, there's, there's nothing ever going to be unclear or ambiguous or anything in that nature. Like I want you completely secure and, and me transparent that you know what's going on in the shop and you know when I'm getting to yours. And if there is a setback, you know about it and just full communication with them. Uh, and that's what I try to sell as a, a, a useful point. And, uh, and I try and do that from the beginning and to be emphatic about what I do and show them that I do have a deep passion for this and that that is what is setting me aside. I am not just a fly by night kind of cabinet company that you're just a number. No, now you're becoming part of my family. You, you know, I'm not doing 500 jobs, jobs a year. It is a handful of key bigger jobs that I want to do and that I want you invested in this as a process. Um, yeah. So I would say that's that's what I use to to kind of set me apart. Yeah, uh, but as yeah, far as sorry, awesome. you asked about marketing. <laughs> so yeah, under, yeah, under yeah. that well, token, I, mean, uh, I don't market. That is marketing. It, that yeah. is marketing. So word of mouth. Yeah. Um, and you know, all I ask a lot of them is, hey, would you mind leaving me a review or you know, posting in your community Facebook group or whatever group or just recommending me? Uh, and good news yeah. travels way better than bad. So. I try sure. and go above and beyond. That's awesome. That's awesome. Is it just you or do you have yep. any nope, just help? Me. Yeah. Just me. Yeah. What's, uh, what's the future hold for you this year? So right now I am working on a full entire house package build for a almost 4,000 square foot house and then a uh, like mother-in-law suite for behind it. Um, so this is the first big, big build of that nature uh, that I'm doing. So a lot of different things to work out for that. But I also, I get inquiries and stuff and I had to um, not necessarily turn away, but just be, again, like I said, transparent. I'm not going to be that guy that says, no, I'm going to get that done by the end of the year for sure. And yeah. in my mind, not truly know if I'm going to get to it. So uh, the inquiries that I do get, you know, smaller ones, sure. I could probably work in with the builds, but Right now, I've just had a, another bigger full build, uh, house build out that I had to pass on actually to Justin because uh, I, I was honest. I was like, listen, I'd like to be a part of it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to or not, but I don't want to promise you something that I can't give you. Uh, yeah. So, you know, and then that puts a bad rap out, you know, because they're going to, they have to deposit for the most part. So they're, for sure, you know, they're, they're invested and it's, it's not okay that I, I drop the ball or kick the can down the road a few months or something like that. I want to be truthful to the words that I tell. So, um, so for, for sure. under that token, I would say my year is, is pretty much, uh, you're booked out booked. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's incredible. That, I mean, what are you doing? Are you doing a kitchen too? So yeah, it'll be a kitchen. Uh, this, the first house is a bigger kitchen with a massive like nine by five Island. Um, and then there's the master bathroom and all of that. There's a laundry room. They have a and cabinetry room. underneath the island. Yep. Right? Yep. Yep. Okay. So, um, it's, it's just a full and there's uh, shelving. Yep. So there's little nooks and crannies to certain areas that we're going to get to later. Luckily in truth, he is a colleague and a friend a bit, which, uh, makes the process a, a little smoother, a little less tense, uh, a little, and they're not difficult people to work with at all. So there's a lot of, and they understand me, they've known me for a bit. So they know I have that creative aspect. So they do give me a bit of freedom to, Hey, you know, manipulate this, how you think creatively it, it looks best or does best. Um, and so that, that definitely helps, uh, when, when they let you kind of breathe a bit to, to do what you do best. That's uh, that's how'd you get that job? So he, I've known him for a couple of years, right? He was in 
Uh, so there's a, a community around here uh, on Instagram. There's a group of local woodworkers and stuff. And if we have any questions or, hey, you know, recommendations or that. And he's known Justin. Uh, Justin did some shop cabinets for him, too. And we kind of met through that and then became friends through that a bit. We would talk about projects, what we're working on in that. Uh, and now, actually, our families hang out and integrate. So uh, he's got a little kid. We've got a little one, too. Uh, and so we hang out when we get the chance. They have Disney passes. We have Disney passes. So we've gone and, and enjoyed that. But they were building a house on the property that they have. Uh, and so I was fortunate enough that he, you know, trusted me with the That's whole cool. job. That's very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, all right. Well, this is a part of the podcast where I ask, where you get to ask any marketing or business advice. Is there anything that you need help with or something you need to think through in terms of growing and scaling your business? Yeah. I mean, you've heard what I got and what I do or don't do rather for, for marketing. So, uh, again, word of mouth has worked, but like I said, there has been a few critical moments where I haven't quite known where things were going to go from here. So, if you have any advice uh, in general or what you see as, as an, an opportunistic spot or niche for me to maybe do something a little different uh, to, to get my name and word out there, I'm all ears. Cool. Do you have four kids? Uh, yes. Dang. Four kids. So the youngest is is two and a half, almost three now in, in, in September. Um, next one up will be wow. nine soon, then 11, Beautiful family, then man. 15. Thank you. So um, one thing that I that I like, um, so the the thing with the fire thing that kind of like that kind of it makes me think of other areas that are potential weaknesses or threats to your business, right? And so like you you've probably your what you went through tends to uh, is something that I don't necessarily think of. I always think about injury, right? Mm -hmm. And like, oh, what happens if you're injured? Um, but, you know, the other the thing that you just went through of like, oh, yeah, my my shop burnt. And so, like, I'm not able. To, so the, the thing that I think about next hurdle to get over is like, how do you de-risk yourself so that if you're not working, you're still making money? Mm. And for me the the biggest thing so you took a big risk and took a shop that's like massive massive the next hurdle that you need to take on is potentially hiring somebody to help out 10 hours a week 15 hours a week hmm. like you actually need to not do everything okay because what will happen when you not when you're not doing everything is that like I mean, somebody that knows how to operate a table saw, somebody that knows how to sand, some like your time is really best spent communicating with clients, marketing your business, and then doing designs. You might even, I would even argue to say is like, you can probably outsource the designs as well, hmm. right? Sure. Because um, you're in a, you're, what, what part of Florida are you in? Uh, Sarasota, Tampa. Tampa. Mm -hmm. So, you, if people, if more people knew about you, you'd probably be booked out for two years, yeah. right? And there's, there's a safety and comfort in knowing that you're booked out for a year. And which is like what, what you are doing or what you've accomplished, kudos, especially coming back off of what you just did. And you actually are achieving what, 95% of woodpreneurs want to achieve. They Everybody wants a long lag time. And what I would potentially argue or have is like, that's inefficient. Hmm. Because you're actually leaving more money off the table. You're, I'm sorry, you're leaving money on the table because you're not able to service other people because you're doing everything yourself. Gotcha. And so what I would do for you is your next set, I would literally go into hiring mode. You don't have the money. 
right? And we all never, no, none of us have the money, right? What's the first thing I said? Well, you have four kids. Mm -hmm. I was like, kids are freaking expensive. <laughs> and you and you have Disney passes? I just came from Disney with my family. Like, yeah. it's not cheap to have kids, right? Yeah. But what happened? You still continue to have them, right? Like, <laughs> we, all, we all continue to have kids, right? Why? Because they provide us with a sense of love and joy. And no matter what, your kids are never going to go hungry. Ever. Yeah. Ever. Correct? Absolutely. Why isn't it the same with your business? Mm. Why, why couldn't you just, instead of having a kid, you have, your, your, you have another family and it's your business. And you want to add more member, members to the family. Take on, take on a part-time employee. Like I would literally challenge you yeah. to take on a part-time employee Just next month or this month. Sand and, and do the, the smaller kind of Sand, tasks. Sand, sweep, okay. everything that you don't ever want to do. <laughs> Hire somebody to do it and pay them a little bit more than minimum wage and say, I want to test this out for a month. I want to test this out for a week. And you already know what the shop plans are and spend half your time training them and indoctrinating them into your system. And then, dude, what could end up happening after that? If they're doing the cabinets, all the flat surfaces, and it's all pre-cut and everything, and you're training them on doing it, then you can probably take on a credenza. You can take on a coffee table. Mm. And you can end up adding an extra project here and there to bring on an extra two to five thousand dollars a month. Interesting. And that person is sick. so that's an extra fifty to sixty k a year that you could be bringing on. And so for me, I mean, and this is for everybody that's listening. It's like you just you actually need. It's actually tougher to stay small. My than biggest it is worry. Uh, with and, and that's why it's funny. I talked to my wife. She knows how meticulous and detailed I am. It's it's hard for me to potentially relinquish. And and on those smaller tasks, I, I agree. Like I can definitely you know that this. But um, and that's part of the eventual goal with a CNC is that I no longer have to to you know dial in my table saw or that. Or if it kicks out, the fence kicks a bit. You don't have to worry about you know all your parts are cut perfectly and they're yeah. ninety degrees. You know you're square. Uh, so that's part of the, the, the progress is to go there and then I don't have to worry about me or anybody screwing up a cut. Um, yeah, it's, it's a muscle. It, this, yeah. What you're talking about is a muscle that you actually need to develop. And knowing that like, you're always going to be 100%, right? As long as the cuts are straight and it looks great, if somebody's doing 70 to 80% of what you can do, because no one's ever going to be you ever but growth comes from actually being okay with relinquishing and it's really hard yeah. if they could do it 70 to 80 percent better uh, just as good as you then that's perfect because look what you don't want to do is get to a point where you are five years down the line and you're literally still making the same money that you are making right now right and you have not grown like sure, this this particular project, this big house package is big, I, and I bet you it's it's a big it's a big nut for you, right? But what's end up happening is that it's taking your eye off of the other balls that are happening. You are actually not marketing and pushing your business forward. It's actually costing you more to take on this project. But you're gonna get you got your milestones, you got your deposits, and you're living off of that, right? Sure. And you're and you're building off of that. You actually need to take that money, that big money, and literally grow your business. That is the gift that this big project has. Yep. And, and so, that's what again, I talked to my wife about. You know, do we use what this brings in as a chunk to look for a bigger shop now and figure out that CNC situation sooner than later? Uh, yeah. To, to you know what I mean to grow in that in that direction. Um, yeah. I do have another I would, question. I would argue I would buy out, buy back some of your time first. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah buy yeah, back yeah. buy back some of your time. Because, I mean, the, the, that's the other thing. It's like you don't, you don't want to 
stay flat, right? What you do want is to continuously grow. And then honestly, you want to be able to be in a space where you can spend time with your family and not stressed about having to do everything. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Because then if, if I'm not working, at least things are still getting done. Obviously, that's right. That's the benefit of, of an employee. Oh, look, even if you hired somebody to just make a list of all of the home builders in your area to send them an email with a one sheet description of what you can do. And they followed up with them once a week for two months until they called you. Like even if, even on that level. Sure. It could pay for itself. If you get a decent job, that's, you know, 20, 30 K or something like that. Exactly. Exactly. And kitchens, because the other thing too, is like, look, if you, if you were able to sell a kitchen package, two kitchen packages right now, How would you fulfill on that? What do you mean? How would how would you get those you know kitchen packages? If somebody said like I need, I love your designs. I want kitchens. Like what would you do? Right now with what I have coming, anyways, I'd have to yeah. I'd have to tell them like I told the other other uh, you know potential client like it's it won't be till next year. And again, I don't know because I haven't ironed out such a big project before to know my timeline for it. For sure. For sure. So for me, the way I would look at it is like, I would like partner with somebody else. I would find somebody with a CNC and then just like, Mm. because then if you have, if you have the in-house person that's helping to push projects forward and your admin and your management is taken care of, then what does that do? It's like, you're a freaking scientist, dude. Like you can figure out all sorts of things. And right now, you're you're in this like analog mode of like client pays me i do the work i deliver it i get the deposit but now if you have extra resources then you can start tapping into your 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 other mind like you're literally a you were trained as a problem solver right and the next level for me that's what i see in you is like the next level of problem solving is like Oh, wait, how do I take what I'm doing and scale even more? The other thing, and that's what I'm going to ask you is we, me and my wife have more recently talked because again, what sets me apart in this field is my attention to detail and communication with clients. We were wondering if that got applied to another field that if you talk to anybody is lacking, which is contractors. Um, So we thought of, progressing the business um, and, you know, me going to some contractor classes and getting my, my GC license and potentially going down that avenue because you talk to anybody who's building a home or whatever and they're like, yeah. oh, yeah, waiting for this to happen. Can't get a hold of the contractor. Yeah, yeah. And so that's just another. And again, then I would be subcontracting things out and it wouldn't be my area of expertise, but I would for learn sure. and know what I'm looking for to make sure that it's done right, you know? And there's so many times that they're like, oh yeah, the the plumber guy came too soon. And so the the cabinet guy has to wait on this and it's just a big jumble of mess. And yeah, it sounds like you just need somebody that's okay with with cracking a whip a little bit to to make sure things line up right. For sure. Yeah. And and you know the other thing that I that I foresee for you just in terms of like so so I look at I look at, I like to look at like my clients and just be like, okay, look, you have this skill set of building cabinetry. What's a complementary sort of thing, right? That a service or product that you could deliver. And I was just like, and I see tables very easily. Sure. And, and I also see, um, accent walls. Okay. Because that's a very complementary sort of service sure sure a table with a wall in the back or such a, t- a table a wall with some furniture and then you could because then you're in this space you're like whoa that wall it looks like it could use some stuff there or their dining table and it's just like this like this sort of scaffolding perspective you know what i mean yeah. and then it'll allow you to maintain the high touch and then you can then go back to your current clients and then upsell them even more mm. and so 
I would like literally eliminate everything else and I would just do cabinets, tables, and accent walls. And okay. with at least with the accent walls, you can hire out a painter and then you can do the design work right. and the installing and then you hire out. And then that's, Somebody that's, just spray on site. That's, that's like half a million bucks right there. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Was that helpful? Yeah, absolutely. I love I love knowledge. I love, you know, somebody else who has a different perspective that, that has something to offer as, as a, an option or an idea or an inception. You know, I'm, I'm all about that. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Well, tell everybody your website and your Instagram so they could follow you. Sure. So website's going to be www.lumberlabinc.com. And Instagram handle in that is still Lumber Lab Inc. as well. Uh, so that'll be the easiest way. Awesome. And is the lab because of the science? Yes, sir. Tried to yeah, right. incorporate that, you know, as, as much as I can. And we're already thinking uh, if I do the contractor, trying to keep it there, the contractor lab or, or something in, in that wheelhouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I love uh, I love the, the lab aspect. Thank you. You should probably wear like a lab coat when you're, uh, <laughs> when you're making. Maybe once I do scale up and get, you know, I'll have everybody who gets, uh, so they don't get their clothes all dusty and stuff, coat. a yeah. lab coat for everybody. You have like a white a white lab coat. That would be pretty. <laughs> Sounds cool. You know. Yeah. Cool, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for Appreciate your time, it. And I look forward to sharing your story out with everybody. Thanks, Steve.